um, that fit into place with inheritance and um, means something else when you talk about classes and inheritance and interfaces. But I'm going to start with a real simple example and we'll, we'll uh, expand it. Um, uh, and, and after we do that, we'll do a more like realistic sort of example where we actually will go through the design process. Um, so, let's say we're a veterinarian, all right? And we're going to write a system for our veterinary office. So veterinarians, of course, deal with pets. They deal with all kinds of pets, right? I remember the one episode of Seinfeld where Kramer said how veterinarians are better than doctors because they have to take care of horses and birds and dogs and cats and all that. I don't know if that would be a good idea though. So, we might make, um, we might make uh, an inheritance to look something like this. Because people have all kinds of pets. Who has a pet in here that's unusual at all? Or usual or unusual? What, what kind? Three dogs? Four cats? Two rabbits? Okay. So already we have a lot of things going on. Anyone else have anything? Anything different than that? Anyone have lizards or snakes? I know some people that do, and they scare me a little bit. Not the people, the snakes and the lizards. Uh, let's see, my daughter has three cats, two rabbits, and one rat. And the rat kind of gives me the creeps. It's the, it's the tail that they have that gives it me the creeps because it's thick on the end and then it tapers. If you look at their paws, they're real cute, the little paws. So I just try not to focus on the tail and I'm okay. At any rate. So a veterinarian has to be able to take care of all these things plus things we didn't mention. All right, uh, down the street from me, there's a place uh, that that uh, that has exhibition poultry, whatever that is. Apparently, they take them to chicken shows. I don't know, but it must be. All right. So if we were making up an inheritance structure for that, we might draw something that looks like this. Pat. Then we got reptiles and maybe snakes and maybe lizards. This will be incomplete, but it should say enough to to, to get my ideas across here. And we got chickens and parrots. Mammal, and I'm actually I'm sort of draw, drawing this wrong. They should all be drawn like this, with the arrow indicating inheritance. And under mammals, we have dogs, cats, and rabbits. We'll leave it at that. All right. So, is there anything different? I mean, okay, we have subclasses and superclasses, obviously. So for a snake, the, sub, the, the superclass is reptiles, and reptiles, the superclass is pet. All right, it's logical. Um, is there anything different between, say, the superclass of a, or the, the class of pet and the class of rabbit. Is there anything different between that? A rabbit is much more specialized than pet. Instead of, instead of hitting around, I'll just, I'll just be direct today and tell you. Can you imagine if you called the veterinarian and said, I want to make an appointment for my pet? What are they going to ask you? Well, what do you have? And you'll say, it's a pet. And I'll say, I know it's a pet, but what is it? Well, it's my pet. You know, it's like, well, no one has just a pet, right? 
You have a dog that is a pet. You have a cat that is a pet. You have a rabbit that is a pet. So no one has something that is only a pet. I have a pet. What, what kind of animal is it? It's just a pet. That doesn't make sense, right? So in that regard, pet is different than rabbit. A rabbit is a specific pet that someone can have. You call a vet and you say, I have a pet. What kind is it? It's a rabbit. Boom, you're OK. But if you say, well, it's just a pet, that doesn't make any sense. In terms of um, object-oriented design, pet is called an abstract class. All right. What does that mean by an abstract class? It means you cannot do this. I cannot say pet p equals new pet because pet is an abstract class. I could say pet p equals new rabbit. So, the difference between an abstract class and a regular class is you can't instantiate an abstract class. You can't make an instance of an abstract class. All right. Um, what's the syntax to do that? Let me look it up. Yeah, it's just simple. Instead of saying simply public class, you say abstract public class. All right. So that's one thing that we have that we didn't have before. So you can have that, and those are as useful in developing an inheritance structure. Right? Because there's still some methods and attributes that exist on that level. Right? So like if I was making this, let's say I was doing a class diagram for this, I would have at the top the pet class. The attributes might be the name of the pet and the birth date. Right? Because um, every pet has a name, right? I, I, we, we could say that. I don't know. Maybe some people have pets that they, they don't have names for, but we'll forget about them for now. But every pet has a birthday, right? Even if you had just estimated. it. And we could write some methods here. Get name. Get birth date and so on down the line. So we could write some functions in this class and we could have some attributes in this class, but we're never just going to have a pet. We're going to have a rabbit or we're going to have a dog or a lizard or a snake or whatever. All right. So pet would be an abstract class and you'd somehow indicate that. I don't know, you could write abstract. Mammal would probably also be an abstract class. You wouldn't say to a veterinarian, I'm bringing my mammal in to be taken care of. Well, is it a mouse or is it a gorilla? <laughs> you know, there's different things you're going to do for those two different kinds of animals. Both mammals, right? They have some characteristics. There might be some characteristics. There might be some attributes they have in common or methods. If I was a zoologist, maybe I could tell you what the attributes and methods are, but I imagine there's some out there, all right? So that would also be abstract. And then down here, the rat would inherit from that. And that would not be an abstract class. I guess, I don't, I don't think they call them this, 
let me let me Google to see. But you could say this a non abstract class or a regular class, or I wonder if they use the word concrete. Yeah, concrete class. Yeah, they, that's a term. I knew I used that term. I wasn't sure if it was a term that people use in general, but they seem to. So the opposite of an abstract class is the regular kinds of classes we've been dealing with, and those are concrete classes. Now, superclasses can also have abstract methods. All right? Abstract methods are a little harder to understand, I think. Um, Abstract methods are things that every subclass is going to have it. You know that, but you can't write sort of a default value for it or a default function for it. For example, what's the typical calories that an animal is supposed to eat every day. Get daily calories. So that's a class, that, that's an attribute. If you're feeding your pets, you know, you want to make sure you give enough food. So there could be an attribute of, of how many calories a pet's supposed to get every day. But is there a default value for pets in general? Well, no. A mouse is going to eat a lot less than a gorilla, and so on. And a horse is going to eat more than a cat, probably, except for my one cat. Um, so therefore, there's no default value we can put in there. But we know that every subclass has to have a value for it, has to have that function. So we could make it an abstract function. So I could make get daily calories an abstract function. So, and how do I make it an abstract function? I just, again, I put abstract in front of public, and I do not specify the logic for the function. I just specify the signature for the function. What do I mean by the function signature? I mean what gets returned, the name of the function, and the arguments. So, if I was going to define an abstract method in PET, I would say something like this. Abstract public int get calories and maybe no arguments. So, what are the rules for an abstract method? Every class that inherits from this either has to have it as an abstract method or has to, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. In fact, let me, let me Google it to refresh my memory. If a class has in, uh, abstract methods, it must itself be abstract. And everything underneath it either has to itself be abstract or have actual methods for the abstract method. So for example, mammals is also an abstract class. So mammal does not have to have a method for public get, uh, uh, abstract public int get calories. But rabbit is a concrete class, therefore it would need a public int get calories method that would somehow calculate the, the calories that your pet should get per day. Maybe it depends on the age of the pet, the rabbit, and the weight of the rabbit, and the breed of the rabbit, or something like that. But to be some sort of calculation that would figure out, okay, for this rabbit it should have this much calories and all that per day. 
So if I declare a class abstract, I can declare concrete methods in it, and those get inherited. I can declare abstract methods in it. If I declare an abstract method, every class it inherits from it either itself has to be abstract or it has to have an actual implementation of that method. In other words, not an abstract method. It actually, a actually has to have logic. So to declare a class as abstract, or to, a method as is, is abstract, somewhere down the line you have to say what that value is. All right, what that method does. So in this case, the rabbit would also need a get daily calorie, which again would do the calculation and determine what the amount was. There's a third concept. So we talked about abstract classes. Again, they're like regular classes, but they're never instantiated. So you don't say new pet. You can't create an object of type pet because it's an abstract class. There are abstract methods which you can declare in abstract classes and which when you inherit from that class either you have to be yourself abstract or you have to have the code for that method. Last but not least there are what are called static variables and we've seen static and we've talked a little bit about static throughout the course. In the first day we have public static main. A static method or a static variable is identical for every member of the class. Therefore, it's defined as at a class level. It's not defined at a uh, individual level. All right. For example, if we had an astronomy class and we were dealing with stars, all right, the speed of light would be a constant. It doesn't depend on what star you're talking about. If you're talking about the sun or you're talking about some other star out in the universe, the speed of light is the same. So therefore, you could define that as a static variable, which means it applies for all members of that class. So anytime you did a calculation, it's like an attribute, but you don't have to have, you're not, each, each instance of it, each object is not going to have its own values. It's, it's a constant, in other words. So oftentimes we do something like public, uh, public uh, static final, which means it's a constant and cannot be changed. All right. We'll see how this comes to play into this next example that we're going to do. I can't really think of a good example of a static uh, variable here. Um, we'll, we'll come up with that in, in our next example. All right, our next example, we're going to talk about paying faculty. All right. Now, this isn't really how we get paid here at LC. This is a simplified version, and I took some shortcuts, and I did all kinds of things, but I think it's a good example to, uh, to talk about um, some of the concepts that we talked about. Inheritance, abstract classes, abstract methods, and finally, static variables. All right. So this is my made up, this is the, how people at my made up college get paid. All right. There are two kinds of at my made up college. Full time and part time. They are both faculty. So full time faculty and part time faculty are both faculty, right? And each faculty person has an ID number and a name and a department. So every faculty member has that. All right? Every faculty member teaches a certain number of credit hours. All right? So those are things that are true for every single faculty person. Every faculty person, we can calculate the monthly pay for. All right. This is a calculation. These are attributes.
here's how full timers get calculated. All right? Full timers have another attribute, a rank. All right? The rank is either one, two, or three. So a full-timer's monthly pay depends on the rank and the number of credit hours that they teach. All right? If their rank is one, their monthly pay is $3,000. Their, their, their regular pay is $3,000. If it's two, let's make it 3,500. If it's three, it's 4,000. So they get paid that. That's their base salary, depending on their rank. They also get paid for any hours they teach over 15. So they get, if they're rank one, they get $600 for all credits over 15. If it's two, they get 700. If it's three, they get 800, their rank. So, let's do it for, for instance. If a faculty had a rank of two, and they taught 18 credit hours, what would their salary be? Well, their regular salary would be $3,500, plus they would get three times the number of credit hours over 15, that would be three times uh, 800. So that would be, no. Three times 700, because their rank is two. So they would get paid $2,100 extra. So their total pay would be 5600 I can already see that this is not realistic. They're getting paid too much for overtime, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. No, here's my problem. Here's, here's my mistake. This is their pay for the whole semester. They get one fourth of that per month because the semester lasts uh, four uh, four months. That's my problem. So they would get one over four. So what would twenty one hundred over four be? Five twenty five? Is it? Yeah, I think that's right. No, or is it? That's right. I think. Yeah, so they would get 4025 for a month if they taught that. Okay, so again, let's, let's, let, let me rephrase that because I forgot the, a key part. This is how much they would get paid over the semester per credit hour, and each monthly pay would be one quarter of that because four months, roughly four months in a semester. That's how a full-time person would get paid. A part-time person has no monthly salary. They don't get paid anything. So if they don't teach, an adjunct doesn't get paid. A part-timer, though, gets paid their credit hours times the lowest rate. Again, divided by four. So all adjuncts get paid at the lowest rate per credit. And so if you taught four credit hours, you would get paid $2,400 for the semester. Divided by four, you get paid $600 per
per month. Is that clear? All right. Let's design this first. So let's create a class diagram. All right. Now, <clears throat> there are certain things that are true for all faculty members, right? They all have an ID. They all have a name. They all have a department. They all have credit hours. And all faculty members have a method to calculate monthly pay. All right? Now, so I'm going to put at the faculty level, the assets that they have, name, department, ID, number, credit hours, what methods, well they have get and set methods for all attributes. I'm not going to write those out individually, but they have a get name and they have a set name. They have a get department and a set department. Get hours, set hours. Get ID, set ID. So they have a get and set for all those. They're also going to have late monthly pay method. Which of those things are going to be abstract? Is faculty an abstract class? Yes. Because every faculty person is either, there's no one that's merely a faculty person. You're either a full-time faculty person or you're part-time. So we're not, there's no one walking around here that isn't one of those two things. So, this is going to be an abstract class. What methods are going to be abstract for this class? calculate the monthly pay, right? Why is that? Well, I know both full-time and part-time faculty have a method to calculate the monthly pay. But I can't define a default, all right, for that. The full-time people have theirs, the part-time people have theirs, but I can't make a default for someone that's neither of those, so it's an abstract class, uh, method. Can I make any constants in this case? I sure can. I can make constants for these things. Whoops. For the regular monthly salary and for the rate for the three areas. So I'm going to make constants in here. that are going to be static for base level one, base level two, base level three, Overload, level one, overload, level two, and overload, level three. I realize as I'm writing here that even on a good day, people can't read my writing. And when I make it that small, no one has any chance of being able to read that. So let me rewrite this bigger even if I have to split it between two sheets of paper. So let's try this. Let's make a big old class. Faculty. It is an class. It's going to have these attributes. 
an ID number, a name, a department, and credit hours. Let me erase this line down here. It's going to have static variables that are, that is constants. It's going to have a static variable for base level one, one through three. I'll just do that. Overload level one through three. It's going to have methods. It's going to have get and set for all attributes. And finally, it's going to have an abstract method for calculate monthly pay. So now, at least you have a fighting chance of being able to read that. All right? Here's something I haven't given an answer to, but you sh might be able to figure this one out. Will an abstract class have any constructors? No? Why not? You can't create an object of that type. You can't instantiate it. So you don't need a constructor. So no constructors in an abstract class. Let me verify that. I lied. Ooh. Abstract classes can have constructors. Because remember, we can chain up the constructors. So I, I had my doubt for a second. So I have to mark myself minus 10 for today. All right. OK. We can talk about those constructors later. I'm going to make my life easy. And I'm going to have one constructor that says all four of those attributes. All right. So we'll have a four argument constructor. So on to are two subclasses. I'm going to try to fit this on one page. We'll see how it works. Full-time faculty. What attributes does a full-time faculty have that are not in that it's not inherited from faculty. Well, I said that they have a level. And what method do we have to code in full time faculty? We have to code calculate monthly pay because that was an abstract in its superclass. So the method that we're going to have, we're going to have a level, of course, and we're going to have a calculate monthly pay. That is not an abstract. Part-time faculty. Does part-time faculty have any additional attributes than the um, full-time faculty? No. What method do we have to implement? We have to implement the calculate monthly pay.
So when I say I want a class diagram, this is more or less what I want. All right? If there was room for more, I would put the constructors up here. You know, constructor all four, constructor here for all four, constructor here for all five. All right, so I'll keep that simple. Notice what I did on the subclass. I didn't repeat things that are defined in the superclass. So, for example, all the gets and sets for each of those attributes. I didn't put those in the full-time faculty class because they're defined in the faculty class. There's no need to do those. All right? I don't uh, do that in the uh, part-time class either. The only thing I put in there is the stuff that I need, the new stuff, the differences. So I'm designing and I'm coding the differences. What's the difference about a full-time faculty? Well, they have a level associated with them. It's one, two, or three. And they have methods to get and set level, and they have a calculate monthly pay method. All right, let's go and build these. And I'll start. We'll see how far we get with this example. I don't know if we'll get all the way done with it today, but we should get so far uh, with it. So let's look at, let me go and create, and I'll keep this here. I'm going to create starting with the, um, with the uh, faculty abstract class. I'll create a full run top uh, on the desktop saying faculty. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say abstract public. I'm going to define the attributes. I'm going to make all of these protected, which means that this class and the subclasses can refer to them. Here's my attributes. Here are my static variables. Constants. These, you actually can make public if you want to. Why? Because they're constants and they can't change. So you don't run into the difficulty of uh, someone being able to manipulate them and be able to manipulate them wrong. You can, so they're sort of read only. All right? But I'm going to make protected static final. And base 
level one. Oftentimes, and you got to give it a value, of course, because it's final. And the value would be whatever I said the base level for one is. I think I said $3,000. I'm going to do that for the other two. I make them ca uh, capital, not because that does anything magic, other than it will just make it easier for me when reading this. Hey, there's something weird with this variable. It doesn't follow the naming convention for regular variables. Maybe it's different. Well, it is different. It's, it's a public static final, or, or uh, it's a static final, which means I can't go in and change it anywhere. It's read only, it's a constant, and I can read it outside of the class. All right? And then I can go and I'm going to define a constructor. It's going to accept three arguments. And we're going to set our attributes equal to the value of those arguments. And I could write it like this if it's easier for me to read. And I'm going to say ID equals arg ID. name equals arg name department equals arg department and finally credit hours equals arg credit hours I am going to skip gets and sets. Does everyone know what a get and set would look like? If not, you should review the pizza example. A get is simply a way for me to get the value of an attribute. A set is a way for me to give the value to an attribute. Remember, I made those pro attributes protected, so I can't directly refer to them. So I have to give a method by which we can, we can do those. So, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip the gets and the sets. I did forget my other constants for the overload. And now, I'm going to put, to finish this, I'm going to put <clears throat> abstract public double calc monthly pay. And it accepts no, no arguments. All right, because it's abstract. I'm going to save it and I'm going to compile it just to make sure I haven't made any typos. All right. <clears throat> so let me save it. It should be in a source file called whatever the name of the class is, .java. And it should be case sensitive, even though it won't complain on Windows. 
it will complain in other environments. All right, so I'm going to go to the command line. And I'm going to try compiling it. Semicolon at the end, okay. That I forgot to do. Pilot, no errors, so it's good. Now I'm going to demonstrate something for you. I'm going to make a test class. Actually, I'm going to download a test class because I don't feel like writing one. Copy the unit test on over there. So, faculty F equals new faculty. So I'll pass in the appropriate arguments for my constructor. I'll get rid of this. I'm going to compile it. What do we expect to see happen? Get an error. Why are we going to get an error? Because you can instantiate an abstract class. So this can't do. We said it's an abstract class. That means that there's no instances of this. All right? So when we go and compile it, let's make sure that we're right. And sure enough, hey, and wording is, is clear in this case, this error message. Faculty is abstract, cannot be, cannot be instantiated. So I care for, cannot say faculty F equals new faculty. All right. Next time we'll pick up with this, we'll, instant, we'll, we'll create the other two classes um, and we will um, run through some tests. We'll witness polymorphism. We'll witness what happens if we don't implement the calculate monthly pay and, and all that. All right? So this is what we'll pick up next time. All right. We'll see you up in lab.